How you doing? This is King Punks. I am Santos, and I'm here today to talk about different lubes and different materials that you might use uh, on yourself or a partner for pleasure. And we're going to get right into it um, with one of the most common lubes that you might find. This is a water-based lube. Now, I happen to be featuring... Um, all the lubes today are uh, from Sliquid. I happen to think they're a great brand. I'm not getting any sort of kickbacks or anything from them. I just happen to be using them today or focusing on them today just because I think they're a really great brand. One of the things that I like about the Sliquid water-based lubes are that they don't have any uh, parabens, they don't have any glycols, and they don't have any glycerin. Um, you might find like an ID Glide or Astro Glide or Wet um, that they get really, really sticky. Um, that's because of the glycerin. Um, oh, right. And today we're going to be doing a lot of genital talk or a certain amount of genital talk. So I will put my hand up uh, if if I think that I'm going to say anything about um, a front door or anything like that. Glycerin can cause like overgrowths of yeast um, and glycols can cause uh, reactions such as BV. So basically I'm just mentioning different chemicals uh, that you don't want in your lube. So glycerin, uh, glycols, and um, parabens, right? So definitely look for, if you're looking at water-based lubes or any kind of lube really, uh, making sure that um, your lubes don't have that. Water-based lube, one of the things about water-based lube is you may find that it's a little bit sort of thicker, it'll bead up. Um, it's going to be pretty slippery and it's also gonna wipe off fairly easily. Right? So um, basically I don't have any sort of much of a residue on my hands or anything like that. Um, it's going to be compatible with any kind of toy that you're gonna use. So silicone toys, glass toys, um, even really delicate toys, you can use a water-based lube and it'll be fine. Um, you can use this in the front or in the back, um, doesn't really matter in terms of like where generally you might use it. Another type of lube you might come across is um, a hybrid. So what's it a hybrid of? It's a hybrid of silicone and water-based. So this is a silicone lube. I'm going to talk about that in just one second, but this is a hybrid lube. Um, these lubes are going to be compatible with um, glass toys, with um, metal toys. They're also going to, you, they, you can use them with silicone toys, but you need to spot check. And what do I mean by spot check? Well, first off, let me tell you, let me show you what a, a hybrid, to hybrid lube looks like. It's going to have that sort of interesting white look to it. It's going to feel a little bit silkier, a little bit slipperier than a water-based because it has a touch of silicone. Now you might find most of the hybrid lubes are going to be white and that's that's that just has to do with like the combining process of um, the water and the silicone-based lubes what you want to do in order to test um, a hybrid lube on a silicone toy is you want to put a little dab of it on the like the butt of the toy the bottom of the toy um, and you want to make sure um, that you just leave it there overnight um, and you can wipe it off like when you wake up or the next time you see the toy um, so wipe it off or wash it off and if when you're done with it, it's sticky You know that the lube is not going to be compatible with that particular toy What is definitely not going to be okay with a silicone toy is a silicone lube Silicone lubes are going to be compatible with um, Toys that aren't like so sort of soft or squishy so you can think about um, like a glass toy or a metal toy you can use it with that silicone I'm gonna put it on my fingers just show you a little little bit of it there 
Silicone is usually going to feel a little bit thinner and much, much slipperier. It's going to have an almost oily consistency. Some people call it kind of velvety. Um, but what you will find is that you only need a tiny bit of it um, and it'll go a really long way. I like to mention that these are really great places for um, uh, places that are not self-lubricating. Um, so it's really, really, really great for butt sex. This is going to be okay for any part of the body. It's going to be compatible with condoms and barriers, um, as everything that I've shown you so far is. Um, what it's not going to be compatible with is the silicone toys. Oh, and the thing about it is also it's going to be really, really, really hard to wipe off. You want to wash it off. You want to wash it off with soap and water, ideally. Silicone lube is going to bond. The silicone in the lube is going to bond with the silicone in the toy and mess up the toy. The toy is going to absorb the lube and it's going to get sticky. Um, and one of the things about silicone toys is that they are non-porous. So that means that they're not going to absorb bacteria. So you can, the cool thing about silicone toys too is you can wash, wash the toy with like just regular soap or water, regular soap and water, anything you'd use on your own body. You can um, clean it off with a toy cleaner or toy wipes. You can also um, boil a silicone toy. So what do I mean by that? Well, put a pot of, of water on the boil, right? On a boil um, and just drop it in like pasta, as one of my coworkers used to say. So just drop it in there like pasta, take it out either with tongs or just use a colander. Um, this toy is gonna be hot. Silicone toys pick up heat. So if you wanna uh, play with a silicone toy, um, you can uh, run it under warm water or cold water, depending if you wanna do temperature play. Um, they're going to be fairly flexible, um, and that's another feature of them, um, but yeah, they're not going to absorb bacteria. So let's say uh, you're putting this in a partner's butt, and you want to put it in your butt. What you want to do is you want to wash it completely, um, or and or uh, you can boil it between sessions. Um, some people, if they're just going the speedy route, will just... Um, use a condom. You don't need to use a condom, but it's really handy for cleanup, especially if you're doing butt stuff, to just take it off, wash it, bam, there you go. Another cool thing about silicone toys is if you put a vibrator to them, and let's see what this looks like here, yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna vibrate. I don't know if you can really see that it's vibrating. Some silicone toys will come with a vibrator in them, um, and you can boil them if you want to, um, but basically you have to take the vibrator out. The easiest way to take out the vibrator is to put a little bit of lube there. Go figure, right? Lube is going to lubricate stuff. Um, so put a little bit of lube in the toy. It's going to be really easy to take the vibrator in and out, and it's also going to make a really cool slurping sound. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is uh, the Tantus Sport, if you're curious. Tantus is a really great manufacturer. Again, I'm not getting any kickbacks or anything for mentioning. I'm just showing stuff that I like that I happen to own, as a matter of fact. Um, one of my pride and joys here is the Enjoy 11. Yeah, there we go. So the Enjoy 11. This is a metal toy. It's nice and heavy. It's super firm. Um, and uh, another thing about this, this happens to curve, as does this. Um, a curve is going to be really good for hitting um, a prostate or a G-spot. Cool thing about metal toys, they are they also absorb temperature. Um, they absorb temperature as well as electricity. So if you are a person who likes electro play, there's a lot of different ways to electrify your body, electrify toys. I'm going to get into that in another video sometime soon. Run this under warm water and it's going to uh, warm up. Same thing with cool water. It's going to cool down. You can put it in the fridge if your roommates don't mind. Other toys that we have that are going to be non-porous are glass toys. This is um, a really cool glass toy. I forget by the manufacturer. I think it's Spartacus. 
Um, so glass toys are not going to absorb bacteria. Um, you can use any kind of lube you want with this. You can also, like I mentioned, use any kind of lube you want with this. So either one of these, have at it. Use silicone, water-based, hybrid, whatever you like. Glass toys are going to be really, really firm. You do not want to boil a glass toy. That's really important. It'll shatter. Um, you don't want to freeze it either. It'll shatter. You kind of don't really want to freeze things that you're going to put into a body. Um, they can stick to the mucous membranes, and that's also it's a not good. Also, free, uh, uh, frostbite. Um, so definitely don't freeze your toys. You can put them in the fridge. You can run them under cold water. But anyway, feature of glass toys is that you can kind of, if you want to, you can look through them. There we go. And it's going to sort of magnify whatever's there. Um, it's easier to look through them if you put a light to them. You can put a light to them and the whole thing is going to light up. So imagine playing doctor with that. And let's move on to some porous toys. Um, this is a porous toy by Oxballs. Um, it is a glove. I don't remember what it's called, but if you look up Oxballs glove, this is the only one they make. So this is a porous material, meaning that it can absorb bacteria. So if somebody is having um, like an overgrowth of yeast, or if they're having BV or any sort of other infection, um, this can absorb uh, that and somebody can reinfect themselves. Um, so basically I'm just mentioning that um, like also if you share it with a partner, bear that in mind, one can transfer bacteria from a partner to another partner as well, um, even if they've washed this a million times. Um, so not just the glove, I'm talking about um, any toy made of elastomer. One of the benefits of elastomer is that it's nice and squishy, it's really soft. Um, sorry, it's going to be hard to put this on without lube. And I've actually uh, tried, uh, I've actually watched people try um, when I was at work and I had this out as a demo. Um, not this particular glove, this one's mine. Um, but yeah, so basically it's really hard to put on without lube. So I kind of have to like fist it just to get it on. But yeah, this is going to add some width and some girth to my fingers. Um, it's going to give me a bit of squish. It's going to give me a little extra texture. Um, if I were to surround an area and put a little bit of lube on it, it would be really, really slick and slippery. And also, um, if I wanted to spank somebody with it, it would have... Um, a lot of impact too, right? It'll have, have a lot more sting than just my hand. Um, so those are some fun things about this particular glove, um, but also uh, some of the things about um, this material in general is it's going to feel a lot more slick and slippery with a lube on it. And it's really stretchy, so a lot of, um, you might find a lot of toys, um, especially rings, that are going to be made of this material. Uh, that are going to stretch around different parts of the body. Clean soap and water. Very simple. Um, it, as I mentioned before, you can, um, if this can absorb bacteria, so you just want to use it to, to wash it, to keep it clean. Um, but, you know, it's not going to be completely sanitary like the uh, non-porous toys are. Um, you can use toy cleaner with this and with any other toy as well. So... Uh, another material we have that is porous is Cyberskin. You might recognize this from a Mr. Limpy. You might uh, recognize it if you have a sleeve. A lot of sleeves are made from this. And some like dills and prosthetics are also made of uh, Cyberskin. Uh, the thing about Cyberskin is it is going to be really squishy. A um, little bit squishier and more pliable than if you have like a realistic silicone. Uh, piece as well. So uh, this is going to be nice and stretchy. It's going to, this one in particular is going to fit around certain areas um, and have a nice bit of squish and suction to it. Um, but a lot of folks are really familiar with like the Mr. Limpies, uh, which are going to just sit in uh, a pair of undies really nicely and feel really squishy and really um, natural. The thing about this material is it's not just made of um, elastomer like this 
or silicone like this. This is made of a rubber and mineral oil composite. So if you have one of these, um, you might notice that it gets sticky after a while and kind of greasy if you know you don't want to leave it um, with your clothes in a drawer because it might get your clothes all greasy. Um, so how do you take care of this? How do you wash it? How do you store it? Um, really, really simple. Just water with this. Um, you can also use toy cleaner. Um, the way that you would do that is if you just rinse it with water, bam, that's it. Let it dry. You're done. And on to step two, which I'll talk about in a second. But if you want to use a toy cleaner to clean it and deodorize it, um, you just rinse it with water. Um, put toy cleaner on it. Make sure it's all incorporated everywhere. Let it sit for a minute or two and then rinse it off one more time and then let it dry completely. Now, whether or not you've used toy cleaner or whether or not you have used toy cleaner, uh, what you want to do for step two is store it in a baggie. Um, with uh, some powder. Now, you don't want to use talcum powder. You definitely don't want to use talcum powder on anywhere, uh, let's say, personal. What you do want to use is either renewing powder. But Well, renewing powder, the good thing about renewing powder is uh, you can find it everywhere. But if you notice, there we go. It is made of cornstarch. The renewing powder is really cool because if you go to a brick and mortar store, um, they have them there and they're more than happy enough to sell you an $8 bottle of cornstarch with a really nice like powder cap, which honestly is the only feature that's better uh, from that than this, right? It's less messy, but this is going to be, you can buy like this whole tub for less than this. You just gotta remember to go to the supermarket and buy it. Anyway, to store it, you put it in a plastic baggie when it's dry and just shake and bake, that's it. Um, you can put it uh, in the same drawer as your clothes. I, I like to put it in a separate drawer from everything else. Um, I happen to have just storage just for my toys because uh, I have lots of them and I'm lucky that way. Um, so some things that I didn't go over, I didn't go over oil-based lubes. This is slam dunk. Um, you'll find these marketed for mostly for butt stuff. This is going to have a really thick creamy consistency. Um, almost sticky, but when it heats up, it's going to be really like slick and smooth. Um, old school, back in the day, um, old school leather dudes used to use Crisco for like fisting, right? And also often for like lots of different types of sex. Uh, it kind of fell out of fashion. Um, when folks started using condoms a lot more prevalently uh, because of the HIV AIDS crisis. But folks still use oil-based lube. Um, uh, oil-based lube isn't so great for use um, up front uh, because um, oil uh, can be a little bit hard for like the front door to shed. Um, so it can lead to like um, bacterial over, uh, overgrowths and overgrowths of yeast, depending on somebody's body chemistry, what their individual body can or can't handle. Um, you may also uh, have heard of oil-based lubes, um, like uh, coconut oil being really popular. If you use an oil-based lube, um, it's going to be better on um, a silicone toy, a glass toy, or um, a metal toy but you don't want to use it on any of the other rubbers. Um, another thing that I don't even have here today is a jelly rubber or vinyl toy. Those are the kinds of toys that when you open them, it just smells like a factory um, exploding in your face. Excuse me. Um, so the thing about those is that smell um, is 
off-gassing. So they're made of uh, vinyl um, and also um, chemical softeners. Uh, and those chemical softeners make the toy unstable. So basically, that smell is all those chemicals coming out into the air. Um, they can leach into your body. Um, and they can also absorb um, the stuff that your body or a partner's body is putting out. So the one benefit to those types of toys is that they are usually super cheap. Um, so if you are having a partner over or like somebody, a single serving partner, let's say, um, fine, sure, you can use that in a pinch. Um, if you don't have any silicone, silicone toys or other toys, uh, you can also, if for some reason, um, like other types of toys are not accessible to you, that's fine. Um, you definitely want to use a condom with those toys. So, uh, yeah, that's it for King Punks this week. Um, again, I am Santos. Um, did you have a particular favorite toy or material or thing that happened today? Um, if you do, let me know in the comments. Um, yeah, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.